This is Dr. Ardevan Akavan. I'm a pediatric urologist and director of robotic and minimally invasive surgery at Johns Hopkins. And today I'll be talking about robotic ureteral reimplantation for the treatment of vesicoureteral reflux in children. Reflux is common. It can be found in up to 38% of children with antenatal hydronephrosis and up to 50% of children who present with a febrile UTI. Now reflux in and of itself does not harm the kidney. There's no quote unquote water hammer effect. But reflux is associated with renal damage in two ways. The first is through congenital dysplasia that can't be prevented or repaired. And the second is through acquired renal injuries that can be prevented. This includes febrile UTIs, as every infection is associated with about a 10 to 15% risk of causing a permanent scar. And most children typically grow out of reflux, usually by potty training age. And the initial goals of care are to keep the urine clean to allow for children to safely reflux until they outgrow the reflux naturally. This can be done through prophylaxis, although this is controversial. The indications for treatment through surgery include breakthrough febrile UTIs while on prophylactic antibiotics, progressive renal scarring on serial imaging, or females with persistent reflux who are unlikely to resolve spontaneously. The options for surgical intervention include deflux, open ureteral reimplantation, and robotic surgery. Deflux is the least invasive option, and the advantage is that it is done through an outpatient procedure with minimal discomfort. The disadvantages are that there is an inferior success rate when compared to surgery, as only 70 to 75% of patients have long-term success. And additionally, there is a 12-fold retreatment rate when compared with open surgery. When surgery is necessary following deflux, it is oftentimes harder than if deflux had not been done beforehand. Open ureteral implantation is the traditional standard of care, and it typically involves making a four to six centimeter fan and steel bikini line incision. The bladder is then opened, and the ureter is then tunneled from one side to the other. The advantages of this technique are that there's a 95% success rate. The disadvantages though are that it's the most painful option and an epidural is typically required. Additionally, it's associated with a two to four night hospitalization as well as a large incision. Robotic surgery is also an option. Through robotic surgery, the surgeon sits at a console on one side of the room looking through a 3D virtual reality display. He is then able to control the robotic instruments that are inside the patient the advantages of robotic surgery are that there is a tenfold magnification and visualization. Additionally, there's a tremor filter, and also the surgery can be done with minimal incisions. Robotic ureteral reimplantation requires three eight millimeter incisions. The surgery involves using the robotic instruments to incise the detrusor behind the bladder to allow for the development of a trough. The ureter is then laid into the trough and the detrusor is closed behind the ureter, allowing for a back wall to prevent reflux. The advantages of robotic surgery are that the success and complication rate are comparable to that of open surgery. Additionally, it only requires a one-night hospitalization. The procedure is less painful than open surgery. In this study, up to 45% of patients undergoing open ureteral reimplantation reported severe pain, whereas only 9% of patients undergoing robotic surgery reported a similar degree of discomfort. Additionally, up to 35% of patients in the study reported no pain following robotic reimplantation. Additionally, there is better scarring with robotic ureteral reimplantation. This is an image of a child several hours following her robotic ureteral reimplantation on the left and one month following her surgery on the right. The disadvantage of this technique is that it is a newer modality and there are fewer published outcomes. To switch gears, I'd like to talk about a case presentation. This is a four-year-old female who initially presented with a history of right grade four reflux. She was having recurrent febrile UTIs while on prophylactic antibiotics. She has a history of right grade four hydronephrosis and even split function documented by nuclear medicine scan. She has no history of avoiding dysfunction or constipation. After discussion of the options with the family, they elected for robotic ureteral reimplantation. This is the view from the robotic console that the surgeon has. The robot is used to dissect out the ureter and isolate the ureter from the posterior peritoneum. Once the ureter is completely mobilized, a trough is developed by incising the detrusor behind the bladder. Once the detrusor is incised, uh, the mucosa begins to pooch out from behind the detrusor. 
the great care is taken not to violate the uh, mucosa behind the bladder. Uh, after the uh, detrusorotomy is complete, uh, uh, one centimeter flaps are developed bilaterally. The ureter is then laid into the trough and the detrusor is closed behind the ureter, thereby providing a back wall to allow for compression of the ureter, which prevents the reflux up the ureter. This is the final appearance of the ureter after the reimplantation is complete. Following the surgery, the patient required no narcotics and she was discharged the following morning. One month afterwards, she had a stable renal ultrasound showing no worsening of her hydronephrosis. Three months afterwards, she had a normal VCUG demonstrating no residual vesicular ureter reflux. She has had no UTI since the surgery and she has been doing well since. If you know of any child with vesicular ureter reflux who may benefit from robotic surgery, please feel free to contact me for, to arrange a consultation. Thank you.